All right, folks, <laughs> here's the final uh, video in the Jason Coffin build. Uh, I said Jason, but I have Crypt Keeper and Candyman here, so whatever, man. Uh, I want to share with you, though, the coffin itself and how it looks in an image. And since the last part of this video really just shows some dry brushing and a couple other things, I didn't want to feel like I'm cheating anybody. So uh, we're going to discuss some of the images that I took using this coffin. Look at this Crypt Keeper photo. Oh my God, I love this thing, man. Uh, let's slow roll through it and just really just talk about it. You're going to come down and see the coffin here in a minute. That lantern is lit using a real LED that I wired uh, using a light wand that I created. I blew some fog onto the scene. Uh, I got in real close and tight with a Canon 100 millimeter macro. There's Candyman laying in there. We got some dirt on the coffin. That coffin's looking real nice, man. Fits your seven inch NECA horror figures nicely. Uh, you know, this coffin is just really cool. When you think about starting from blank pieces of pink or purple XPS foam, ending up with a coffin like in this scene here, uh, the process really is pretty incredible. Uh, and once again, uh, that light is lit with a uh, real LED that I created for the scene. Look at the texture in the coffin. Uh, it just looks really good. I got some nice blue light on there. Let's go ahead and discuss the set. So, what I want to just share with you since the beginning, uh, or since part of this video, on the, la the last part of this video for the coffin build is a little bit dry. It's just about dry brushing. <laughs> I thought I had more footage. Uh, I want to share with you some behind the scenes a little bit on the coffin build and uh, a shoot that I did with it that um, I'm not going to make a tutorial for, but that I'll give you some behind the scenes to help fill out this video so that uh, I don't feel like I cheated anybody. <laughs> I'm guilty. Uh, but, you know, here we have the coffin. Uh, you know, I've got a blue gel with a grid overhead here. Uh, shining on the background, some trees that I've hot glued to some piece of uh, cardboard. And this is just some topsoil mixed with some, uh, you know, mulch on here. Um, and the coffin is set into a hole that I created and given it some elevation toward the back. Uh, you know, the Crypt, uh, crypt, crypt, crypt Keeper here, I've got him on his knees. And um, he's kneeling down behind the coffin with a hand on it. And he's kind of just exposing uh, Candyman in there. Uh, you know, Candyman fits really nicely in this uh, coffin, by the way. Uh, remember when I was making the video and I measured it, I said that it would probably fit most NECA horror figures. And here in this case, you can see it, it, it does... Uh, fit Candyman very nicely. Um, so that's a that's a bonus. You know, you can use this coffin for more than one uh, more than one figure. I took a few little skulls and bones and put in the dirt there. One thing I do want to share with you is this light. Now, you know, you, you see the pictures uh, in this video of this uh, lantern glowing and what I did is I took a rod, a really thin plastic rod, almost like thinner than a straw, a drinking straw, um, and I ran wires up the length of the, the straw to a super bright LED bulb that I, uh, I think this is a nine volt, no, this is a three volt. So I used two AA batteries um, inside the battery box let me, sh let me take this out of here and show you real quick. Uh, so this is the rod. It's just a really, you know, long black rod. And there's a battery box that I've hot glued to the end. And I just buy this on Amazon, the battery boxes and the LEDs and stuff. And what I do is I can put this anywhere in the scene I want and uh, light different parts of the scene. 
and I can hide this different ways. Now, yeah, you do have to know a little bit of Photoshop to, to uh, erase this from the scene, but, you know, it's, it's really a basic, it's really a basic, uh, you know, skill in Photoshop. So, and if you do it and you keep this hidden and your camera angle is right, then you just won't ever see this in the scene and it's really nice. You know, you can put it under, you can create a hole in the coffin and put this under the coffin into a light inside the coffin. There's just a lot of ways you can use this. And in this case here, you saw in the photos, I really use it to light that. Look at that. <laughs> you know, and you can't get this effect in post-production. You have to use a real light to create real... You know, if you see the picture, you'll see Candyman's half of his face is, is lit and the other half is not. That's because it's natural light and shadows falling on Candyman from this uh, tool that I created. And um, it's pretty cool. Uh, and so I just come up sometimes with some creative ways to light stuff because you have to uh, in order to get the shot. You know, and then I've got the fog machine here uh, to blow fog onto the scene. I will plug it in and show you. Uh, you know, I bought this fog machine a couple, three or four years ago with a gallon of fog juice. And um, I do need to quit being so lazy and create a way to let less fog out at a particular time. Uh, this one, it's either all or nothing. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you the fog machine here in a minute. Uh, and I do use, you know, a remote shutter to trigger my shutter actuations uh, you know and I've got everything on a tripod you know you guys have seen my setup before I'm gonna move the GoPro real quick and show you guys the whole scene you know I'll show you just how it looks and it's really pretty cool I mean you know in, in a small studio you've got to make ways to make the most of your space, your lighting, <laughs> all those things. Uh, let me find the remote for the uh, fog machine because I always seem to lose it. So you can kind of see the whole setup here. You know, I've got an overhead light here on my C-stand. I've got the, uh, I use an Explore 600. You can use whatever light source you want for overhead. One of the things to, to know about this shot too is the fog I'm going to get is not going to be fog that is nice swirly frozen patterns of fog because we're using a lantern and a lantern is giving light uh, from all directions and so the fog is going to be illuminated from all directions and not uh, if you want that nice swirly frozen you know swirl patterns of fog you have to use flash here we're using flash but not to freeze the fog uh, and get those patterns but just to illuminate the scene. The main light source really is the lamp from uh, the Crypt Keepers uh, that's in his hand. So the fog we're going to get is sort of a diffuse, misty looking uh, cloudy fog and so that's expected from the light source that we're using and the shutter speeds that we're using. We're using 6 second shutter speed at f11 and the reason I'm using f11 is because I really do have being this close with this uh, Canon 100mm macro, being this close, depth of field, even though I'm still a good 8 inches from Crypt Keeper, who is my main subject in focus, the fall off between Crypt Keeper, his hand, and the face of Candyman, there, it's a great amount of depth of field to have to cover uh, at this uh, focusing distance. And so I used F11, and... That gave me an exposure good enough that I was happy with uh, for the lantern. And, uh, you know, and, and so that's why we're at F11 at six seconds. It takes a while to expose at F11 uh, because I didn't want to have to focus stack this because there's too many things going on to have to focus stack it. I did do a shot of uh, the whole scene with the lights in the fog. And then I did a shot uh, of just... Uh, you know, the same scene again, but without the fog. And that way, I can, uh, that way I can mask out, I can take the two shots and mask out the fog over uh, Crypt Keeper's face. 
so that you can see him through the fog. But uh, that's that's the only uh, trick I did. So I'm going to fire off my fog machine real quick, and you're going to see. Uh, let me turn my little light wand on here, and let me actually turn off my overhead uh, light here in the studio. Ah, I'm scared. I'm scared. Let me turn my little light wand on. And this is a little pretty bright for a little three volt light. No doubt about it. So here we are. <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. So, you know, here we are like this. We're setting ourselves up for the shot, you know, and I will let a little fog out. And I will take the picture. Bam, look at that. Woo, baby. <laughs> let me give it a little more fog. One more time. One more time. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so you can see the amount of fog that comes out. <laughs> it's a lot. I'm going to hook up some sort of hose with some sort of reducing hose on there to allow the fog to be a little bit more controlled. But, uh, you know, all in all, from some, just kind of recapping, from some pink styrofoam to a coffin, to a shot like this, you know, that's my process, and, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys watching, like and subscribe, follow me on all the platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, I appreciate it, folks.